Hi and welcome back to TubeFix. On today's program we're actually going to take that silicone molding compound and cast the valve that we're trying to replicate. Remember the point of this is that we should be able to cast this valve into a silicone mold and then use that mold to cast it into acrylic. That's at least the hope and we'll see how it works out from there. I talked in the last video about working on casting this valve, the first valve, into acrylic so that I can try to use that as a third valve, as acrylic valve. So the very first thing we have to do before we cast this is kind of talk about the procedure. So I'm going to put this valve into this container, I believe this container, mix up some of the UMU 30 silicone rubber compound, pour that in around the valve and let it set. Then I'll be able to pull the valve out of the silicone rubber compound and that will leave behind a mold. That mold then I can then pour acrylic into and cast a replicate of this. Now I got a couple problems. One thing is, is if I allow the silicone rubber mold compound to go through the valve into the holes, it will go all the way through and be impossible to remove the valve from the rubber mold. So I have to somehow compensate for that. But at the same time, I do want it to go somewhat into the holes because I want to know where the holes are, what the sizing is, and where the ports need to be. And so I have to kind of balance those two aspects. So I believe what I've come up with is I'm going to take the molding clay that I have, and I'm going to make small plugs that actually go into the middle of the holes. Those plugs will stop the silicone rubber mold compound from going all the way through and will allow it to just go into the hole on both sides, but not all the way through to join. And that should allow me to cast it without having, with still having the holes in it, but without having it continuously all the way through. And so I can still remove it from the mold. That's at least my concept. We'll see if it actually works out. So now I'm going to go and work on getting that clay into the valve appropriately. To the time lapse machine. So as you can now see, I now have it in here, in all the holes of the valve. It's in the middle, so I'll get some of the mold to go into there, but it won't go all the way through, and it'll prevent it from uh, being unremovable. Now that I have that in there, I do not want the molding compound to get inside the valve itself. So I have, there's a vent hole right here, and there's a vent, uh, the stem hole and the vent hole right here. So I need to get those covered. I'm gonna try some aluminum tape here and see if that covers up the holes well enough that I'm happy with it. It really won't stick to it very well because it was lubricated once upon a time, so that won't work. <clears throat> it's all a matter of finding out the ideas, right, kids? All right, so that won't work, so let's try something else. Let's try a little bit of clay. So a little bit of clay on top, although I don't plan on covering over the top, but it prevents any problems if I have any problems. So let's go put some over the top here. And I'm going to put some on the bottom as well. Now the bottom on this is actually hollowed out because the spring sits inside the cup and actually, and then the valve vent is there as well. And when I cast into acrylic, I won't have quite the same ability because this will be on the bottom of the cup like this. And so it's going to cover up the bottom cavity. So I'm either going to have to drill this out or somehow mill this out in order if I want the, if I want the cup space. And if I don't, that's not a big deal. The other part I'm going to have to work out is the venting, which I don't quite have an idea about how to take care of, but I'll figure that out as I think about it a little bit more. I may just end up having to vent it through the valve by drilling through. We'll see. This is a good start though. So now I have this. You know what? I'm actually going to pack this full of clay here that will give me a mounting base for this in the cup which is a good thing. You don't want it to fall over while it's molding. That would be a bad idea. 
Yep, so that sticks it to the bottom of the cup, just like that. There you go, get back in camera so you can see. So now I think I'm ready to mix up some molding compound and get that poured in. So, time to mix up the molding compound. I've never actually worked with this before, so this will be very interesting. So I'm gonna get the valve out of the way, grab a different cup. The cups are nicely graduated, so I know exactly where I'm going to. And I'm gonna mix up an entire cup of this substance. I believe that will be about the right amount. So we'll find out. But, so it's a two part, similar to an epoxy, where you mix two parts together and then you have a limited time to work with it. Nicely enough, this is, um, you get, uh, 30 minutes in the can, I believe. And, yep. So you get 30 minutes to work with it, and it's fully cured after six hours. So um, we actually get lots of time to work with it. 30 minutes is more than enough. Um, so I'm going to measure out a half cup of this, which is the blue. Hmm, it's rather thick. No, it's just being cranky. Not all that thick, it's just cranky. All right. Wow. Kind of slow going there. I think I'm supposed to mix it in the container first before, kind of like paint. So go and mix this up first. There, now that I mixed it. Oh, that works much better. And we'll go exactly to a half cup right there. Oop, a little bit over a half cup. That was my mistake. That's alright. We'll just do a little bit over a half cup for the next one. Put the cap on this one. So let's get that poured in. See, isn't that fun? Look how fun that is. You thought craft, you thought your crafting days were over once you got out of school. You were so wrong. There's so many neat things you could do. So we need a little more than a full cup of this. We have a little more than a half cup of the other stuff. There. Okay, stop now. Woo, what a mess. All right. <laughs> so, a beautiful pink and blue combination here. I'm going to um, wipe off the stir stick from the pink. Hopefully this is fairly non-toxic. It did not require, it doesn't have much of a scent to, at all to it. I thought it would have like a, a vapor, but it really doesn't. So um, clean it off my fingers just in case it gives cancer, um, but it does, it's not supposed to. So I think we're fine there. So now stir this up. Yes, I realize I am thoroughly messy on this. Thoroughly and totally. I did not prepare my workbench well for this experiment, did I? Well, live and learn, right? All right, so now that we have it well and truly purpled, nice and even, well stirred, it's time to mold. So I'm gonna put this right here. Yep, you can all see, good. It's the hardest part with these videos is I always have to make sure that whatever the hell I'm doing, what I'm talking about, you guys can see too. It's always a bit of a pain, but I do it for your benefit as well as mine. We're going to pour this around the valve. Here we go. This is exciting. These are all kind of experiments because this is really not the real way to do this. This is never the real way to do this. You know, this is not... Um, this is not how instruments are made. You certainly don't cast valves into acrylic. Um, certainly do not try all these sort of things, but we're being non-conventional here because I don't have a metal lathe. Um, and this is potentially just a much better way to do this for my experimental reasons. And you know what? So far it's been very non-destructive. So if it sucks and, uh, and results in nothing, so be it. And look at that. Cast. Mold rubber cast of the valve. Valve number one. So here's hoping this works out. 
Now it's got a six hour drought dry time on it um, so that we have to wait for that and then we'll have to demold it after that and see how we did. So as you can see <coughs> we now have a completely solid mold. It's been sitting here for about a day. Um, technical curing time on this is about six hours. You get about 30 minutes to work with it in the pot and then it takes about six hours to cure. <coughs> But the temperature here in the basement is a little bit colder than the recommended temperature of 72 degrees. And I wanted to give it good lawn time, plus I had regular life to get to anyway. So that's fine. Now comes the interesting part of extraction. I'm hoping I can just cut down the side of the cup, pull the cup off, and then slowly extract it out from the top. As I should be able to take this clay off the top of the valve itself and extract it from here. But we're going to find out if that actually works or not. So after struggling with this for a good minute, I realized that that's not going to happen quite like I had hoped. I had hoped somehow I could pull this away. As you can see, you can kind of pull it away from the valve and I could extract it out directly out of here and just kind of wiggle it out. But because if you remember right, the molding will actually go into the valve. I actually have a problem. I can't get it out because those fingers are going into the, the valve holes. So what I'm going to have to do, which if I thought about logically was the smart way anyway, so what I'm going to have to do anyway is I'm going to have to cut it down the side of the mold all the way down and peel it back. And when I go to cast, I'm going to have to have it wrapped so that it holds the mold together and it casts properly. All right, here we go. And there's our valve. Coming right out. And as you can see, the inside of the mold has, whoop, come back here, has the fingers that we had hoped to have. Not all the way through but enough that you can tell exactly where they should be, which I think is pretty fantastic. So I'm pretty happy how that turned out. I wish I could have had a mold that had the holes go all the way through, but I don't know really how I would accomplish that without severely compromising that mold or having some sort of problems cutting it out. I think what I'll be able to do is after I cast it into acrylic, the, that the fingers going into those holes will be enough that I can um, fit an appropriate drill bit and drill it the rest of the way through. That's the hope at least. We'll see if it actually works out that way in practice or not. Next time on the program, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do next, but either I'm going to work on that lead pipe and trying to bend that into shape, or we'll work on casting some acrylic. Thanks for watching. Come back again and see how we're doing next time. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe.